to the chip shortage. And Blunty, the title that you gave was, where is the real chip shortage coming from? And I thought, oh, well, I mean, yes, let's find out. Where is the real chip shortage coming from, Blunty? Yeah, so this is a video that links uh, that we've linked to here. That's a great video. It goes over basically the whole, um, you know, the whole idea of what's going on. But um, it rings very similar to the story that we heard from. You know, we reported on pretty early from Mads Tech, um, and the story that we reported on a little bit after that. Just generally speaking, about mm -hmm. the fact that um, you know the real shortage is in trailing edge. Uh, so the idea is that trailing edge semiconductors, right, are less in demand in some cases, but in some other, some other cases, they're very high in demand. And also those machines are being repurposed to, to do early parts of different processes for smaller nanometer stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, when the smaller nanometer processes run out of, you know, whatever's going on, um, then they need more people from the other equipment or more stuff from the other equipment. So, and there was also the fact that it was all trailing edge. So people were dropping off building it and it was assumed that it wouldn't be needed as much. And uh, that also means that prices went up on all that stuff because it was harder to make. And uh, those machines weren't being produced that produced these. There's a lot of factors, right. That all kind of went into all these parts and pieces that, that caused this issue. And this, uh, this reviews really well uh, from a technical perspective, what exactly um, is happening with those trailing edge semiconductors. And that's directly affecting us because we, use those trailing edge semiconductors in our uh, in our flight so yeah things like our our uh, flight controllers and so forth use those trailing edge semiconductors it, it addresses yeah. one of the things that i've sort of wondered about which is uh like okay we've got shortages of intel and amd microprocessors really really small nanometer stuff really really cutting edge stuff right and it's there's only you know two factories in the world that make it fine whatever and you can't make enough of them but like commodity stuff like these little amd like or uh, stm32 rather uh microprocessors mpu gyros very very these are not very small nanometer processes they should be cheap and inexpensive and plentiful and yet they seem to be just as difficult to get as we're, we're seeing shortages and and this is an interesting way of explaining how those things are related that a shortage in one sucks capacity from another yeah basically nobody knew this was coming and then everybody mm -hmm. started to build out like you normally would into smaller nanometer processes and uh you know decide where to spend money and then all of a sudden there was a huge demand so yeah. this does talk about i think there's six like major buildings like major uh fab plants coming up from different people across the world so um i think it's six like huge ones that will make a big difference i think intel's doing a big one and stuff so um uh, you know, I think in like three to six years, this will this is, it will be impossible for this to be a problem. But I think before that, it's going to be like this slow trickle into them building up the ability to do all these things and then source all the stuff for them. So, well, sadly, prices tend not to go down once they've come up. So this, uh, you know, we're going to sound like our parents talking about when bread was a nickel. We're like, I used to be able to buy a Diatone F3 for twenty five dollars. Yeah, I, fl I flew it uphill both ways. <laughs> uh anyway um all right uh that's interesting link that's linked down in the video description if people want to check it out it's an 11 minute video and well worth a watch if you want to find out more about the chip shortage and why it's happening and maybe when it might end